everyone and welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. Uh, today we're going to be focusing on a subscriber request which was uh, adding in a sort of beach and sea uh, to the landscape and sort of uh, kind of creating an island if you will. Now I'm not going to create a full island, I'm just going to do sort of this side here, kind of go around here and add a beach in and a bit of sea. Um, for anyone who's wondering, the poll finished at midnight last night. Um, if you are watching every single episode, you'll know that um, the um, first person shooter won, and we will be continuing on with that uh, going forward. We'll, we'll do a few more episodes on it uh, and sort of do a bit of extra focus around that. Um, if there's anything specific you want to see from the FPS series, please uh, let me know in the comments because that will help me as well, give you some direction. Um, and, and show you things you actually want to see. I will be doing the wall run first, which will be come out tomorrow. So keep an eye out for that one. Now, where it comes to this, the first thing I want to do is I want to duplicate some of these um, landscapes. So we've got landscape five. Uh, we've got lands. We're going to do landscape six. Uh, Duplicate landscape seven, and we'll do landscape uh, eight for now. I'm sure you guys will have a far better naming um, naming strategy than I have just doing levels because mine's actually kind of confusing. It's not the best. So I reload the persi persistent level so it picks up those extra levels. Now it is also picking up the levels from uh, Resident Evil. That's because this persistent level is sitting above the, in the hierarchy. So we can just ignore those though. So uh, we want to load level one to four because we know those are all sat in their correct positions. Uh, that's fine. We've got five, six, seven, and eight to now put on the board. So if we open up our summons world composition. Now, we, oh God, I'm moving things I shouldn't be moving. Some, oh gosh, I'm, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing here. Oh no. I might just undo a lot of that stuff I just did. Right, there we go. Uh, so we've got level one, level two. Well, I don't know why level two is like ridiculously big. That's bizarre. I know we've got level uh, eight there for some reason. So, um, level three, where's level one? There's level one. Uh, so we actually kind of need it to be to the right of level two. Let's just give it a go. See what happens. Let's do level five. Yes, I do want to replace it. Uh, there's level five. Brilliant. That's that's okay. We can work with that now. Um, the next thing we want to do is add one to the bottom. Let's do six. See what I mean by this is a bit all over the place. It's better to have it properly organized. One, two, three, four, five, and six here. I also wanted two up here. So let's do um, seven above that. Yeah, um, and then let's do um, eight to the side of it. Uh, great, and this is going to be our beachfront. <clears throat> so now that we've got them in the world, we should be able to just close that down. And if we turn around, we should have some lovely land to work with. There we go. Isn't that huge and lovely? Great. Um, now, the next thing we want to do is get our landscape, go to paint. Now, all of this should already be set up. We need to determine where we want our beach to kind of begin. So, let's find beach. Uh, oh, we haven't assigned that a, a um, weighted texture yet. So, let's do that now. There should already be one there. There we go. Give it a second to sort of prepare all the shaders and stuff, and then we should be able to start painting this down. Now it might take a little while because it's preparing shaders, but when it sort of kicks itself in a bit, it should look fine. Uh, let's just start painting some grass on as well. There you go. It is starting to come in. Uh, now we want it to kind of be half and half grass, half sand, um, and then what we're going to do from there is start giving it sort of like a little rounded shape. 
So it kind of makes sense if you make your painted areas also a little bit rounded too. Um, um, I don't know why it's being weird. I think it's just where the shaders are compiling. So, okay. While we're waiting for shaders to compile before we start finish off the painting side of things, you kind of now need to decide um, how you want your island to to sort of fold out. Now you're obviously going to want some C here, so you're going to add in an extra probably one, two, three, four, five, six, probably another six uh, tiles just for C, which we will cover that as well. But let's first off see how we kind of want. Ah, oh, there we go. There's the sand coming in there. Okay, let's um. Let's look at this then. So we want to we want to sculpt. Definitely want the sculpt texture. We want to hold shift down so it goes downwards. And it's probably good to just sort of determine where you want to have um, uh, have it kind of go to, be the, like the depth of your. Zoom out a little bit here. Now this is probably going to look a bit harsh, but again, I think what comes down to these tutorials. If I was spending like days on them, it would look a lot different, you know. Now we will smooth out the edges so it doesn't it's not so uh, harsh of an incline. But we do want to determine where the bottom of our C is gonna be so that we actually know where our um, we know where our water can go for the sea. So now we've got a beach. We can smooth this out now. You're probably going to want to smooth this out even more. I mean, I've probably gone too deep for the water. Um, but you can either probably keep smoothing it. As you can see, I'm making that kind of um, less harsh of an edge just by constantly smoothing it out. Um, let's move over a bit. It's going to be way easier if I actually just go over here, isn't it? Um, there we go, far less harsh. Um, and you've got that kind of island corner there, which is great. Now, the only thing we want to do now for this, um, now, I, I want to change that paint actually, thinking about it. Now, the tool strength being up to one is never going to be good for the edge. So let's retry, let's make it a lot smaller too. There we go. You get a more of a blended look now, and it looks way. Uh, again, you probably have to do this a little bit more just to get rid of those harsher edges. But by bake, making it zero point five, you're basically getting kind of like a, a mixture of the two, right? Um, <clears throat> uh, let's up the brush fall off as well a bit, so it's just not as. Um, not as harsh, but yeah, play around with it, get your textures just right, but having um, having the, the tool strength to about five, the brush fall off as well, a higher, you'll get that kind of a little bit more of a blended feel to everything. I mean, if you go in a bit closer, we can see where the grass is still kind of <coughs> coming into the sand, and that's what you're looking for, right? You're looking for that kind of merged effect. Uh, it's always going to look a little bit worse up here because we're, we're way in the thick of it. When you come down and you kind of start loading in those higher textures, it just looks way more effective. Um, you also probably want to uh, blend with the foliage tool, add some rocks in here and things like that and, and that sort of such. Um, just to give it a, a bit of a better feel. Uh, so we can come out of this for a second. Um, and we want to go back into our select. We now want to come back to content and go into Brushify. Let's get our meshes. We want, no, not meshes. Let's go for um, materials, water, ocean. Perfect. That's, what, that's just what we wanted. Zoom in a wee bit so we can see what we're doing. Drag it up. I think it's just so small there we go, yeah, it's very small. Um, because we're not adding this to the spline, there's not too much we should need to do to it. We just need to enlarge it. 
Uh, probably going to be easier actually if I do this in the details panel. Let's go uh, 1000, 1000. Uh, there we go. And then we should have now, we don't want. There we go, and you can just about see the, the sand go down, which is exactly the kind of effect you want to have. Um, be a little bit careful, you've got no dips in the terrain that will show the ocean sort of in the middle of the landscape. Um, you probably could drop the scale actually down to about half on the Y, just to make your life a little bit easier. And then just, oh, and then just drag it out to sort of where it kind of meets. Um, and then you just want to do the same on the other side. Um, so we can actually just copy and paste it and move it down and then rotate it uh, on the Z axis by 90 and um, then just start kind of connecting things up to get the look that you want. Um, again, I'm not doing this perfectly, um, but I will try actually to get this looking how it should. So. And then all you need to do from there is uh, add in more terrain to, to do the underwater parts, right? Um, let's just copy and paste another one of those and then do it like that. So, yeah, so if depending on how far you want your uh, terrain to kind of go, as, like out underwater, for example. So if you think about like Rust, for example, Rust has like a A to, um, I think it's like A to M. No, it's A to... It is A to Z actually, so A to Z in tiles and um, zero to 24 or whatever it is. They have a huge map in terms of in terms of um, sections. Now these sections probably aren't gonna be as big as the ones I've done here. Actually, I don't know, they probably would be about the same actually thinking about it. So you would have, if you were doing Rust for example, you'd have one, two, three, you'd, have, you'd probably have about, um, 15 tiles of land across and then they have a further three or four four or five tiles of just water where they have like underground labs you can build bases in water they have all the wreckage they do the cargoes the oil rig that's all within their water uh, tiles so you would just create a new tile and then you would just put the water on the top and then you would do a post process volume when the player is underwater um, which I can also show you that as well um, but then, yeah, so as soon as you go underwater, you'd have like, um, you'd have a post process box just underwater that when the player goes under it, it adds the water effect, um, on the, for the character. And now you'd also have to obviously do all the swimming and things of like that, that sort of nature, but you can definitely get away with just doing, um, the, the, at least the post process volume so that when I go underwater, it doesn't look like this. This is what you'd expect to see, but actually you want it to be that you have this underwater effect that, that sort of takes some place. Um, but yes, but for, for the, for being on the top here, you've got this kind of cool looking, um, ocean. Looks very effective. And now you've got a beach and you would just copy this all the way around. You'd add more tiles in all the way around and you would just add your water squares all the way around as well. <coughs> There's a couple of things that brushify do provide. Oh God. Um, one last thing I will show you from Brushify that will just help break up this kind of horrible square. Uh, if I go back to the Brushify facts, I go back to procedural maybe, uh, grasslands, no. Um, where is it? Uh, ground? No, it might not be provided in the packs I've uploaded. But they do provide, uh, definitely with the Arctic ones, and I'm sure they did do it with this, but I'm maybe distant meshes, actually. Ah, here we go. Yeah, they provide you, um, now this is going to take a little while to load in, but they provide you with um, uh, kind of like little mountains that you can kind of scale up and stuff and put in the background to kind of break up that um, horrible kind of um, endless bound looking kind of sky but it does break it up and makes it kind of look um, a little bit more different. I'll let this load in and I'll show you at the end. Okay, so it's loaded in. Uh, not quite where I wanted it to, but that's fine. Oh, I clicked the wrong thing. Uh, 
Well, I can't click on it. There we go. And then I know this, the shaders aren't in yet, but you can sort of plonk it down somewhere. And uh, on the details panel, <coughs> I set it to like 20. That might be too big. Yeah, that's definitely too big. Let's go 10. There you go, right. And then as you can see, if you drop this then sort of into the world somewhere, uh, I think actually it probably does need to be a lot bigger. Uh, let's move it way further back. Uh, there you go. And then now bring it a bit closer. And just push it down a bit. Now again, you'd have more tiles there, but if I was stood here. Uh, again, it's not perfect, probably, but you could have these sort of awesome backgrounds <clears throat> quite far away. Again, this is too close, but it's just to show it off to you. You make this a lot bigger, make it probably like 100 by 100 by 100, and set this at the end of your sea just to make it look like there's other little islands sort of in off in the distance that you can't get to, but it just gives you the feel of a more open world than what your boundaries actually are. Um, that also brings me up to another thing which I will probably cover, cover at some point is um, invisible boundaries to stop players going places they shouldn't do. Um, a lot of games do this where like you'll try and jump over a railing in the world and it, it just won't let you go and that's because they don't want you to go back there because the likelihood is, is you'll jump down there and things will just start falling apart and the world will just start looking distorted um you'll you'll get issues like with the water for example where when you go underneath it you can't see anything or the landscape you you know you look under the landscape there's no landscape now right that's because it's a single-sided plane right which you're just distorting so developers don't want to obviously don't want you to obviously see things like that um if you're if you've played the new pokemon that came out on friday a lot of people are complaining about uh, the camera clipping with the, the ground where it sort of sets in place for battles or captures and things like that. Uh, and you can see through the terrain and then there's nothing there. And that's because what's happening is, is you're getting that effect where, uh, if I can pull it off here, uh, you are like half and half. I, I bet I can't now, can I? No. But you get the idea, right? Um, that's what's happening with Pokemon uh, right now. And developers obviously don't want that to happen. So using invisible boundaries just stops players going places where you where you provide smoke and mirrors where everything looks amazing but the minute you step out of that scene it looks horrendous that's smoke and mirrors right and um a lot of developers use that to to kind of give you higher quality but when you look on the other side there's like nothing there almost um and yeah invisible boundaries will do that so i will cover that as well at some point so i want to cover invisible boundaries uh, and we're going to be doing a lot more uh, haven project stuff as well uh, but hopefully you found this useful. Um, I will uh, thank the person who provided this tutorial for me uh, in the uh, comments. But yeah, you would just copy this around and that's how you get your island. Um, and then we'll do a water post-process volume at some point as well um, to show you when you go in the sea how to provide that look. But thanks so much guys for watching. Uh, I will catch you in the next episode. Uh, don't forget to leave a little like and a little comment of anything you'd like to, uh, me to cover. And uh, also hit that subscribe button, it's free to do, and you can always change your mind. Thank you so much, guys. Take care. Bye.